Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and we only have one edition of Video Clips this week because Thursday is Thanksgiving so I'll come back to that at the end of what I have to say today. Um, a couple things I'll mention in the way of uh, announcements. One is starting next week holiday gifts. Uh, we do, uh, we make the best gingerbread biscotti and uh, we, like I'm involved in it. I am involved in taste testing the biscotti, just to be honest with you. And I can tell you, it is the best gingerbread biscotti in the country. Um, we also make holiday cookies and they're in beautiful tins. Everybody I give these to um, uh, really loves them. In fact, I've, if I don't send them, the one year I sent something different and the, and the disappointment was palpable. So I vowed never to send something instead of the cookies again because they are always a big hit. So, uh, and then you can do gift certificates for educational programs, for membership, for all kinds of things that we do here. I always tell people, give the gift of health. Most people have all the stuff they need. I know that I do. What I'm interested in is spending time with people I love and care about and gifts that are meaningful. Um, so like my dad's taking me to Bermuda for my birthday. I'd rather spend time with my dad in Bermuda than have him buy me something. Okay, so uh, today, oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention, and I know it's only November, but winter semester starts in about eight weeks, six weeks actually, and so we have to think about that. We're offering some amazing courses. I'm gonna be teaching one on children's health. It's a 24 hour, course and um, I'm going to take uh, take the, the participants from uh, prenatal nutrition all the way through adolescence and, and deal with all of the things that, that uh, involve kids, not just the food, but attention deficit disorder and behavioral issues and common childhood diseases and what to do about them and, and that sort of thing. So um, that's one course I'm going to teach. We're going to offer the diet and lifestyle course again. We have so many new things. And if you've never had a conversation with me or exchanged an email with me about some of the things that we do here and how you might be able to help out or get involved or take our classes or whatever, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and we can start to have a conversation about it. I'll send you information. We can even set up a phone call. Okay, so I am really excited about uh, the topic we're going to talk about today. I've been looking into this for a while, and that is um, ALS, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And it's a, I'll just start by telling you it's a neurological disorder that leads to muscle atrophy, paralysis, and eventual respiratory failure. It affects men more than women. The outcomes are terrible. Most of us know somebody uh, or know of somebody who's had this disease, and uh, medium survival time is someplace between between 20 and 48 months, and only about 10% of patients with ALS make it uh, longer than 10 years. And the quality of life can be pretty, um, pretty awful. Stephen Hawking is a notorious exception to the rule. He's lived much longer than most people do. And there's some um, theorizing that he has a little bit different variant of ALS, which is why he's, uh, why he's lived so long and fortunately has found ways to communicate, to write books, to lead a, a somewhat intellectually normal life in spite of his physical disabilities. Um, there are a lot of causes of ALS, and I'm not going to focus on, on all of the causes. Maybe we'll do that on a different day. But an increasing body of evidence suggests that both the health status of an individual and diet may play a role in the development or the progression of the disease. Um, and I'll give you some examples. One study showed that people who eat more fiber and less fat were less likely to develop ALS. Another study showed that increased intake of foods high in carotenoids, beta-carotene, and lutein associated with lower risk of ALS. And a study published in 2009 showed that people who ate the highest amount of antioxidant-rich foods like fruits and vegetables had a significantly lower risk of developing ALS when compared to those people who consumed the least. So we see here that a plant-based diet may be somewhat protective. Oxidative stress is a risk factor for ALS, and diet has a profound effect on levels of oxidative stress. Higher intake of dietary fat and protein increases the generation of um, reactive oxygen species, or ROS, and even one high-fat meal can increase systemic oxidative stress. On the other hand, eating a low-fat, high-fiber, plant-based diet like the one we teach at Wellness Form Health reduces oxidative stress. 
higher homocysteine levels, which are homocysteine is a byproduct of the breakdown of methionine, which is found in meat, dairy, and fish. Well, high homocysteine levels are associated with faster progression of ALS in patients who have it. A new study involving patients who were uh, being treated at 16 ALS clinics reinforces the fact that nutrition not only impacts the onset, but also the progression of the disease. Higher intake of fiber, antioxidants, and carotenoids from fruit, vegetables, and whole grains was associated with better function and better breathing for ALS patients, while milk and lunch meats had a negative effect. The researchers wrote, and this is a quote, those responsible for nutritional care of the patient with ALS should consider promoting fruit and vegetable intake since they're high in antioxidants and carotenes. Another study involving ALS patients who were tube fed concluded that uh, patients fed high carbohydrate formulas had significantly fewer adverse events and live longer than patients who were fed a standard formula or a higher fat formula. Many studies show that ALS has features of and actually may be an autoimmune disease, and I have four references for that. I think it's a theory that we can't entirely discount. If this is the case, it might be really good news for ALS, since there are many studies showing that the right diet can stop or slow the progression of autoimmune diseases, and in many instances even put the disease in remission for long periods of time. Research shows that diets like raw vegan diets, diets lower in fat, diets that exclude high gluten foods and dairy have been effective, sometimes more so than drugs, for reducing symptoms and even putting the disease into remission. While there aren't any studies using these types of dietary patterns on ALS patients, um, I was able to find one case report in which a patient with ALS showed improvement after eliminating gluten from the diet. One case report doesn't make the case, but the point is that we see clues in the medical literature that ALS has some features of autoimmune disease, a disease we know a lot about and which we've been fairly successful here in helping people to improve their health outcomes when they have it. Leaky gut is a condition that almost always accompanies autoimmune disease and treatment with probiotics has been shown to improve outcomes for patients who have autoimmune disease. Negative changes in the gut microbiome, including damage to tight junctions and increased permeability have been found in ALS mice, along with increases in pathogenic bacteria and decreases in the beneficial bacteria. Now this has led to a study that's currently going on uh, with researchers at Harvard Public Health, the Broad Institute, and Massachusetts General Hospital. Um, this study is being conducted to evaluate the intestinal microbiota of patients who have ALS and compare them with controls to evaluate the extent to which the gut microbiome influences ALS onset or progression rate. While research studies are definitely needed. I mean, we need to look at the differences in the gut microbiome, figure out how much of it really is cause and effect relationship. We need to look at studies. We need to do studies showing that probiotics are effective, but the bottom line is that probiotics are inexpensive and low risk options, which might be helpful. So here's where we are and why I'm so excited about this. At this time, there aren't any cures for ALS. In fact, the prognosis is pretty terrible. Um, completely um, robs people of their quality of life. It's extraordinarily stressful uh, for the people who um, care, care for these people. I, I have a friend who, uh, her brother-in-law, uh, died of ALS uh, several months ago. And watching how stressful it was for the family uh, is, is um, it's, I'm mean, just really sorry to see. Um, so there's nothing to lose. In a situation where there are no good alternatives that we know about, maybe there will someday be a research breakthrough, but right now, not so much. I just don't see why we would not um, try dietary change and probiotics for patients who have ALS. Anything that makes them even a slight bit better can be very important to the patient, quality of life, and to the quality of life of the family. More patients need to be told about this. So uh, I'll probably do another video clip and we'll get into more causes. There are some other things that appear to be directly related to the um, cause of ALS and I think that's worth exploring in a different video clip. And uh, this article, by the way, I have uh, 19 references and you guys ask me all the time, 
how to get the articles, become a subscriber to the Health Briefs Library, and if you aren't currently one and you want to become one and get a passcode, you can read this and 2,500 other articles that I've written over the years on a variety of topics ranging from vitamin D to cancer treatment. Okay, well that's all the information I'm going to share with you today, but my final words for you since Thanksgiving is Thursday and some of us will not only be celebrating with family and friends on Thursday, but we have events perhaps for the whole rest of the weekend. And I'll just remind you that um, th think about my voice in the back of your head when you're getting ready to reach for something terrible. What would Pam think if she was sitting here watching me eat it? And I'm not talking about dietary perfection, but hopefully we've all moved beyond the place where we gorge ourselves with awful food at Thanksgiving and have to lay on the floor and wait for the food hangover to pass. No need to do that. And uh, hopefully you all have great plant-based options that you can bring to gatherings. I've been invited to a couple of gatherings. I'm going to go. They're carnivores. I'm going into the den of the carnivores and I'm bringing my own food, which interestingly enough, the carnivores always scarf down and um, and ask if I brought more. Sometimes I have to make sure I get my portion before the carnivores get to it. But um, you can have a, a healthy Thanksgiving. You can go back to work on the Monday after wearing the same clothes you fit into the day before. If you just do a little planning and a little talking to yourself about what's really important because Right now we need to be thankful for all kinds of things, like we have this great YouTube relationship and I get to talk to you every week, um, that many of us know this information about health while most people in the world don't, and doesn't that make us lucky people? So let's think about the real spirit of the holiday, which is not how much bad food you can eat, it's all the things you have to be grateful for. That's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody else who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.